Welcome to Second the Car, I'm Oliver, and this is a brand new fifth generation Kia Sportage. I'm here today and I'm gonna drive all the different trims. The Kia Sportage was launched in the UK in 1995 and this all new generation is based on the N3 platform and it's been custom designed for Europe. So this car has been built from the ground up to suit the European market with the crossover SUV segment. There are 18 different models, eight powertrains and five different trim levels. The two trim, the three trim, the GT line trim, the four trim and the GT line S trim. Today we've got petrol and diesel versions. We've got a 48 volt mild hybrid. We've also got a full plug-in hybrid as well and a hybrid. So there's a lot of choices here. The new Sportage uses the same design language as a Kia EV6 with the opposites United approach which Kia have taken. We've got this fantastic redesigned Kia Tiger nose grille and these cars they just have a very aggressive purposeful look and inside you'll see in a minute when I get in the cars they're very very similar to the EV6 and that's one of the things I loved most about the EV6 in my videos was the design in the interior I thought they were packed with technology and these cars also have that same technology so these are really exciting cars the new Sportage is available in multiple colors here today we have the Luna Silver the deluxe white behind me and this is the penta metal and these all have the black contrast roof which is also available the new sportage is 30 centimeters longer 10 millimeters wider 10 millimeters higher it's got 10 millimeter longer wheelbase so it's bigger than the previous generation and there's a choice of 17 18 and 19 inch alloy wheel designs which you'll be able to see on these cars here and i have to say the 19 inch ones over here on this car look pretty fantastic i really like those those are my favorite the sportage diesel petrol mild hybrid full hybrid are available now later on this year the plug-in hybrid is also coming and will be available there's all-wheel drive available as well as front-wheel drive and the car's capable of towing 1650 kilograms as well so it's got a pretty good tow load in terms of power we go from 113 horsepower to 226 horsepower what does a new kia sportage cost well it starts at 26,745 for the 1.6 petrol manual in the two trim going up to about 43,000 for the gt line s for the plug-in hybrid and there are basically price points all the way between 26 and 43,000 depending on the trim so there's something for everyone here there really is a huge amount of variety with the new Sportage and you know that's to be expected because the Sportage was Kia's biggest selling car and so it's the car which they're really focusing a lot of time and effort into making sure there's something for everyone and looking at these cars today I think it's fair to say that that isn't going to be a problem at all. What about space in the back? Well, there's 591 litres of space in the back of this car. So we got quite a lot of space back here. You can obviously pull out this and adjust it like that. And then these seats at the back can also be pulled down. There's little pulleys on the side here. And then we can push these flat. So you've got even more space and you can move everything in. And then there's some space underneath here for storage as well. So there's quite a lot of space back here. And I do love a power tailgate. How much space is there in the back of the new 2022 Kia Sportage? Well, I have to say there's a lot of room here. I'm quite comfortable. I'm about 178. I've got decent headroom above me, even with this glass panoramic sunroof, which is really beautiful. I've got plenty of knee room. I've got space under the seats to put my feet out. I feel really quite comfortable. We've got airline style pockets here. We have airline style hooks here, which I'm guessing are not for your jacket because you need a really small jacket. But this is probably for your jacket or your coat. There's little hangers built into the back of the headrest, which is a nice detail we've got two usb type c connectors on the side of the seat so you can plug in your phone in the middle here we have our climate control with two little buttons and we've got a little space where you can store your phone and then let's not forget in the middle of the seats we have two cup holders where you can put your drinks and then you can fold down the seats from the back as well if you want them flat welcome inside the 2022 kia sportage inside here it looks very very similar to a key ev6 and that's a really good thing because i love the interior of the key ev6 you've got these two 12.3 inch curved displays which have all the latest technology android auto apple car plates all on there you have it all in the middle here we have the really cool center console which i really like again about the ev6 there's a slight difference on the ev6 there's a gap here and there's extra area here but you know it's not an EV there is a engine in this car even in the hybrid model we have our heating and cool seats here and our heated steering wheel in this which is one of the top spec cars we've got our gear selector which is a nice circular rotary dial which you can turn between reverse forward 
and neutral. And then you have our parking and our reversing camera auto hold and our terrain control, which is a cool feature in this car and only in this car, which we come onto in a little bit. And then we've got our wireless charging down here and we've got our USB standard type A and then our type C connected. And as I mentioned, there are two USB type C's behind me in the seats at the side here, which is a nice little thing to add. And then we have Kia's multi-mode display. Now I really like this feature. By the way, we've got a nice engine start stuff that's in here, which allows you to swap between your climate controls, your navigation and media. So I really, really like this. It means you can have less buttons, but they're changeable. And I think this is a really clever feature of Kia, and I think more car companies should do it. Recently, I've had a bit of a go at Mercedes in the EQS having too many buttons, which they did. And then we have the Lucid, which had some nice physical buttons and also had a similar idea here. On the Lucid Air, there was a side screen on the side of the steering wheel, which had touch buttons kind of like this. So really good idea. I think car companies are going that way with screens, which are buttons. It's a really clever thing to do. Strongly approve of that. It gives multiple functionality in the same space without adding lots of buttons. So I love it. We do have two cup holders here. We have an armrest with a space down here so you can put stuff into. And then come to the steering wheel. The steering wheel is a more traditional Kia steering wheel, unlike in the EV6 but it still has everything you want. It's got your voice control, your volume up and down, your phone buttons, and your adaptive cruise control and lane assist controls as well. And then we have this kind of cool, kind of L-shaped vents on both sides, which I like the look of. And then obviously in this car, we also have memory seats one and two that I can adjust as well. So it's a really nice interior. If you can obviously option a panoramic glass sunroof, I would really recommend it. I think glass roofs, sunroofs, are really, really fantastic. They give you a lot of air. They make the car feel much brighter and a much nicer place to be. Also, I have to give credit to Kia. I'm not a fan of black trim, but there's something about this black trim in this car and the EV6, it doesn't look quite as annoying as it does in Audis or Mercedes. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's because there's a lot of buttons so you feel like the space is being used. Whereas on those cars are just stick the black trim in there anyway so that's that's nice even though i'm not a fan of black trim i think it looks good on here and i do like this metallic kind of imprinted design on the dash as well which then matches with this soft touch plastic on the top here which has a sort of a fake stitching effect but still looks really really good this is the 2022 kia sportage and this is the hybrid 1.6 liter petrol with a six-speed automatic gearbox, front-wheel drive, and this is 226 horsepower, 315 newton meters of torque, zero to 60 in 7.7 seconds, and has an MPG of 48.7 miles per gallon. This is the GT Line S, and this is a top-spec version of this car, the new 2022 Sportage, and it's a hybrid, but it's not a plug-in hybrid. What that means is the electric motor works with the engine to make sure that you get really good economy and you get better performance in terms of acceleration because there's no lag from the engine. The electric motor does the job for you. And the electric motor is recharged by the regenerative braking that the car does. So when you come to a brake, it recharges the electric motor. This is one of the options on this car. There is a plug-in hybrid which you plug into the wall and you can charge up the battery. And this car can run only on electric motor. So it means that you don't necessarily need to use the engine. You can't select the electric motor on its own, but the car will intelligently handle that for you. The GT Line S has all the latest tech, and this trim model includes the ability to use the key fob to park your car remotely. So you can move it forwards and backwards, something which Kia and Hyundai have been doing on all the latest cars if you spec it as an option. So it's fully loaded. I love the interior of this car. Like I said before, it's like the EV6. You've got these two beautiful screens are very, very easy to see what's going on. You've got your multi-mode display, which lets you swap between your maps and your climate controls. You know, we've got map navigation, your media controls, and then back to the climate. So you can do all of that stuff, which is really, really handy to have in one place. Now, in terms of performance and ride and how it feels, well, this is the front wheel drive version. There is also an all wheel drive version. And in this front wheel drive version, I definitely don't feel like it's lacking for any grip. It's moving very, very nicely. Obviously using that hybrid at 350 Newton meters of torque, 
I can feel it moving quite quite nippy no issues there in terms of ride so right now we're in eco mode and we're moving around a bit this is not a very even road but I'm very comfortable we're in eco mode right now let's change the sports mode so when I turn the little knob here we get a change of the displays on here this is a cool new graphic this is different to on the EV6 and now we've got a bit more performance a bit more torque I can feel it gives me a bit more kick and we've got the full 226 horsepower 350 newton meters of torque this is the all-wheel drive version of the 2022 Sportage and this has got the same 226 horsepower, the same 350 newton meters of torque, but now we've got a all-wheel drive, four-wheel drive system. This car could do zero to 60 in eight seconds compared to 7.7 .7 for the front wheel drive. So a slight variance on the slower side in acceleration, but what it lacks for in acceleration, it gains with grip and ability down narrow roads and off-road because we gain a terrain mode which is new to the Sportage. Down here there's a button which says drive which allows me to go between sport and eco but if I press it it goes into a terrain mode. In terrain mode I can now choose between snow, mud and sand. Well you know this is England there's not much sand but we put it into mud mode and this system allows the car to balance the power to all the wheels to maximize the grip in scenarios such as mud, snow, and sand. And it's the first for the Sportage, and it's a cool little bit of technology. And so let's just see, zero to 60. It definitely feels like there's more grip. You definitely feel a difference between front wheel drive and rear wheel drive. That's not to say that if you have the front wheel drive, you don't have any grip. Obviously, I have plenty of grip in front wheel drive mode, but the difference is you do notice, you do notice it. It does feel a bit better. In day-to-day -day driving, you won't make any difference, but, you know, on circumstances where you want an extra bit of grip, having that all-wheel drive system is definitely an improvement. This is a 48-volt mild hybrid, and this has some things which are different from the other car. So the first thing to note about this car is the drive modes. Now it's got Eco, Normal, and Sport, whereas the hybrids only had Eco and Sport. There was no normal mode. The other thing, too, is on this car, we have a drive mode for lock. So you can lock the wheels when you're off-roading. Whereas on the hybrid version, you couldn't lock the wheels, but on the four-wheel drive version of the hybrid, you could put it into terrain mode. This is also a GT Line S model. So it's very, very well specced, very, very well appointed. There is an electric motor, but it's not able to run the car on its own. So it can only ever help support the engine and reduce the load on the engine. So with the other two cars I've driven, the hybrids, the battery and the electric motor can actually run the car without the engine being on. So the mild hybrid basically uses the electric motor to support the engine and reduce the pressure that the engine is under, reduce the load the engine is under. So that means you get improved economy and a car which is a bit nicer to drive and a bit smoother to drive. In terms of power, this car has less power. It's 148 horsepower, 250 newton meters of torque. So it's got less power and it's got less torque and therefore it's slower. It's around 9.6 seconds to 60 miles an hour. So it is a slower car, but like I said, it costs less than the hybrid, more than the standard petrol versions. Obviously this is a GT line, so it's towards the higher end as well, but it fits in. There's something for everyone in this line of the Sportage, which is really, really good to see from Kia. This is the 1.6 litre petrol version in the three trim of the 2022 Sportage. And a couple of interesting things to note, the other cars that I've driven have a different center console, and I'll comment on that when I'm driving in a minute. But the other thing too, is you kind of feel like there should be a handbrake here in the middle, and there isn't a handbrake. The handbrake is at the side of the steering wheel on this side here which is very interesting. Now that is the same as on the other Sportages, but on the other Sportages, because they're automatic, you don't really notice it. I feel like something's missing here. Doesn't any way affect the driving. Just an interesting thing to, to note. The other thing to note is the drive mode button is in different position than on the hybrid as well. You can, of course, change your modes using the button here, get in different position to the other car. This is one of the lower spec versions of this Sportage. And there are lots of things which are different in this car and there are lots of things which are the same. For example, things which are the same is it's still got these curved 12.3 inch displays which look fantastic and which I really, really like. But then there are things that are different. For example, in the middle console here, there's a totally different design of how it's all set up and how it works, which is different to the other trims. 
things which are the same, like I said, the 12.3 inch screens, the multi-mode display, which I love, and the interior is the same in terms of the dashboard design. Obviously, it's missing some stitching effects at the top here, and the door is just a bit more plain than on the higher trims. This gearbox is super smooth. When I change gears, I don't feel any stuttering from the engine. I don't have any issues changing gears. I don't feel like it's notchy or strange. It's just, it's just very, very smooth for a manual gearbox. We know we've got less power and less torque than the hybrid models I tested, but how does it feel? Well, when I'm accelerating now, I'm going through the gears, it's very smooth. I don't feel like I'm wanted for any torque. I feel like I've got more than enough to overtake and to do what I need to do. We have the key alert system for letting me know when I'm changing lanes so I don't drift, which is fantastic. So yeah, very good performance. Not as fast as the other two, but smooth, easy to drive, not lacking for any power. Uh, I think you'd have a great time driving this car. So what do I think of the all new Kia Sportage? Well, I think it's got something for everyone. There's a model and a trim and an engine for every type of person. If you're after a crossover SUV, this car has the latest technology inside. It's got the latest safety features as well, depending on what trim you have. So it's got something for everyone and there's space in the back for you to store stuff and for you to put your dog if you go out. So it's got something for everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, let me know down below. Would you like a Kia Sportage? Give me a like and subscribe for more on Tech in the Car. Thank you very much.